Well, hello there, everybody. Welcome to today's show. Adam Driver's going to take it home. Could we meet the Mandalorian soon? And we are going to go virtual. It's Collider Jedi Council, and it starts right now. I have coffee and water. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Collider Jedi Council. I'm me. You're you. And we are going to be talking about Star Wars. Today, we have the Jedi Council, the council, everyone who's part of the council, and everyone who will be part of the council for the rest of their council lives on the table today. Hello, Fifo Dios, Emma Fife. Well, hello. Thank you for having me back. It's very nice to be here. I will say your comment about water was a little bit misleading because oh. I'm pretty sure that is LaCroix. Do you, do you drink regular water anymore, no, I, I was for a while. I was on a, a regular water kick, and then I decided that I don't want to do that anymore. But I do have this wonderful mm. movie trivia schmodown uh, glass that mm. was uh, given to me as a gift by the Crusher. Oh, Rachel yeah. Crusher. I, uh, I received a engraved glass myself, uh, awesome. but mine said Obliviate, uh, which is to the Harry spell Potter. to erase memory yes, in yes. Harry right. Potter. Oh, I know it well. I've been watching them all over again with my daughter, who's obsessed, as you know. <laughs> yes, I um, do. And and the not grouchiest, I'm not going to say that because you're not a grouchy man. You're a, a, a complex individual and you are Kylo Ken and you are here today. Now, I, I, I'm apparently very grumpy. I get oh. called, called out all the time. And, uh, you know, OK. What ifs? I don't, you know, what ifs, man? Who gives, <laughs> what ifs? Who gives an S? Who gives an S? Let's F this and do it. <laughs> all right. So it's time for the Jedi Council show. And it is time for movie news. <laughs> Well, let's get into the movie news, because I'll tell you what, this is what we're going to do. Ken, yeah. myself, and Emma talked about this. There's nothing going on in, in the world yeah. of news nah. and some stuff in canon, and we'll talk about it like that. The majority of this is going to be you guys. If you hashtag Collider Jedi Council, if you go to the Collider Jedi Council Facebook group, leave a comment over there, and then we're live, yeah. ladies and gents. So leave some questions, and we'll talk about it. Ken, yeah. what do we got first in this well, non-existent news? Yeah. <laughs> Here, here, I, I can give you the pick. First of all, we got Adam Driver. We, he was talking, uh, and uh, he was he was talking. He was just talking, and, mm -hmm. he, and he gave an interesting quote about Episode Nine and a chance to finally get it right. And that obviously sounds a little uh, like what negative, but you read it, it's a no, real it's solid actorly quote about someone's like we have spent six years with these characters, yes. and now we know them. Sometimes you wish you could go back and change it, like you could like in theater. You can't. You get one shot in film, and they he he really wants yeah. to bring it home and bring it right. Of course. And and, I, and it was funny because when we were going over the what we should lead with yeah. and the way that because Roka, who produces the show, he's like, well, Adam Driver says that episode nine is our last chance to get it right. And I was like, nah, that's misleading because yeah. it's really not. Yeah. That's not what it is. It, no. Well, and I and I think yeah. that, you know, there, there is this this tendency with fans when there's something that you don't necessarily agree with that happened within it's not just Star Wars. It's it's across a lot of different yeah. fandoms where you're like, I didn't like the story thing that happened. Then an actor says something like that. But it's but Ken, you're 100 percent right that mm -hmm. what he's saying is, as an actor, like this is our last chance to really nail these characters and yeah. give it our all. Well, I mean, it's not even just necessarily just being uh, an actor too. Yeah, yeah I, it has a big part to do with it, obviously. But it's the whole team. Because yeah, totally. This is the end of their trilogy. Yeah. So it's like okay, it's like this is the championship game, mm -hmm. and we have to get it right. Like that's anything that you do. So you want him to say this. You yeah, want him to say. He's the way that people could pick this apart is saying, like you said, it's like, what is he saying? Is he saying that the other ones didn't do it right? It's not what he's saying at all. He's saying that out of these three movies, this is the third and final chapter for this movie. This is their shot. Yeah. Knock it home and get everybody excited. That's really what he's saying. You know, he is an, an actor's actor, Juilliard trained, right? And uh, an Academy Award nominee now. I know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. As is uh, Richard E. Grant. So Star Wars Episode Nine is going to have some stuff there. So that's that's the lead story there. <laughs> Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. See you later. <laughs> Speaking of which, is the Richard E. Grant story in there? No. Because no. Let's, let's call an audible here because I saw something about Omaha. This. Omaha. Yeah, there you go. Mm -hmm. um, Richard E. Grant, obviously, who's been nominated for uh, the, the Supporting Actor Award mm -hmm. in Can You Ever Forgive Me, mm -hmm. who was brilliant in that movie. He was there was an interview and Ken maybe you can just Google why we okay. do the other stuff too. He he said something along the lines that he was going to be playing a familiar character in Episode Nine. So right away everyone's going Thrawn, Thrawn, Thrawn. That's yes, that's what, that is what everyone was saying. That's what everyone's saying about it, and I don't think that is the case because no. I don't know if they're going to because if you watch the end of Rebels, then they have a lot more explaining of how he got out of there. That's true. Yeah, I yeah. think that I think that there would be yeah. too many yeah. gaps. To fill in, but I can see the counter argument of okay, well, if you didn't watch Rebels, if you haven't read any of the Thrawn novels, then maybe 
you know, out of context, him just suddenly appearing would make, you know, as much sense as any new villain right. showing up. But for people who do have the context, it would be, the, I agree, there's, there's too many gaps to fill in to yeah. be like, how did he, how did he get back? I, I certainly don't think he's dead. No, but. well, that's the thing. I think that people, because if you go through the catalog of familiar characters, it's a good guess because who else could he possibly sure. be? That's why I'm like, did you get the quote there? Well, uh, uh, a lot of stuff's coming up, but, but there's one, uh, the one where he says he's not playing Thrawn, but that was actually five months ago. I'm trying to find the one from this week. So talk amongst yourself, but look yeah. for it. Yeah. yeah. It, Cause it's talking about his audition process right. and this one story. We already had talked about that story. So I'm digging yeah. around. I'm digging I, around. I mean, I don't know who, who it could be. That's, not, I, that's what I was trying to, it's not going to pull too. back. For, I mean, if they wanted, if my predictions are right, and they do use Palpatine in some way, they'll use Ian McDermott. He's of been course. doing stuff for Rebel, so they're not that. That's an, that's an out. Tarkin, um, if they used old footage, why would would yeah. you do that? You could you could do you could use the actor that played him in Rogue One. Um, Obi Wan, no, no, because you could use Ewan McGregor. People would be pissed off at that. Yeah, I mean, who who's a familiar character that they that they could use? I. Uh I did. I, I don't. Ha no, I don't have a. Th <laughs> I don't have this theory, but someone close to me did. I got. I don't want to spoil it, but yeah, uh, maybe a version of some sort of uh, Sith Lord we know. Plagueis? No, 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 no. But Dooku? No, 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 no. Oh, um, oh. But, but it's a total. But it's. It, I mean, oh. when I say it's. A th I mean, we were just spitballing. What do you wait? Got? Yeah. I think I might know who you're thinking. Just I don't say know. it. Just say it. Just take your guess. I just so, want to take the prediction from my friend. Uh, well, well, give him credit. It's yeah. Alex Back. It's a Black Series Star Wars. And what does he okay. say? He thinks he thinks Darth Vader, not Anakin. Darth oh. Vader. He thinks he could come back as 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 Anakin. It, no, no, what? as Darth Vader in the costume, mask off or something weird, something different. Interesting. Put him and Sebastian Shaw together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not that crazy. I mean, keep, I just, this, sure. is, this is wild, yeah. untamed uh, speculation. I don't, I don't. I mean, I don't think that uh, Vader's going to be in it at all. Uh, so yeah, yeah. I, I, I it's get, a good, it's a good that, prediction. It's, like, it's, it's when you just, put them just together, spitballing around. Yeah. Like you put the faces together, you put some eyebrows on them. You're like, eh, but, okay. But you don't put Richard. It, it would have to be a significant role, and they're yeah. not going to have Vader be that big a part of it. Because why do you get Richard Grant to just do a one a scene as scene. Vader? Mm -hmm. You know, so I mean, who knows? Why do you get? Why do you get? Um, what's his face? Uh, uh, my God, Van Cedo. Max, Max von Cedo. Cedo. There we go. I got there. I got there. I got there. It took me a little bit. The coffee's almost kicked in. But why do you get Max von Cedo for two seconds? He gets killed off. You know. So maybe I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, that, that's the you don't. Get yeah, it. but um. I, so we'll what see. about you guys? What do you think? Do you, who who could he play? If anybody familiar, because I would like to see what that quote is, because it could yeah. be very similar I, to the I, Adam Driver quote. I would like quote. to too. I, Every I, story I I'm clicking on does not have a quote. Where did that him. come from? I don't know. Maybe it's just BS. Yeah. Maybe somebody made it up. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah. dreamed it <laughs> on the internet. <laughs> Unbelievable. Unbelievable. I'm, I'm literally clicking. I've clicked on five stories yeah. with the headline. He may be playing a familiar character, and not one of the stories I can find has nothing quote. has. All right, so yeah. maybe it's just BS. All right, what's next? Uh, next up is what we were talking about. Oh, hey, you know we got to give Nam. Uh, 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 Solo Star Wars story. He's playing hey. uh, Yes, exactly. Playing That's correct. Uh, we talk about nominations, is what <laughs> I was trying to say. Tink. Solo yeah. Star Wars story did get one uh, VFX Oscar okay. nomination. Yeah. So, hey, hey yeah. continues the Star Wars tradition of, uh, you know, a little uh, nomination toss. Right. I mean, listen, for that train sequence alone... Yeah, I oh, would say. Watch, it, watch how it's put together. Yeah, yeah I yeah. mean, I, I still think it's a uh, you know like yeah, an Avengers year, but for yeah. that type of stuff. But well, we we thought it would be the Avengers year, right? But I mean, we thought it would be the Avengers year for uh, I, I forget it was the. Critics' Choice Awards or somewhere else too, and, and Black mm -hmm. Panther won. And Black Panther was not nominated for the for mm -hmm. the visual effects mm -hmm. for Oscars, so you you might be right that Avengers could be the front runner. But who knows? These Oscars so far, just the prediction, the uh, nominations alone has been so unpredictable <laughs> that I, I don't know. I just hope maybe visual effects they'll give that to. Won't you be my neighbor? Because it deserves something. Yeah, <laughs> All, right. <laughs> All right, what's next? Uh, uh, we got, we, hey, nah, Mark All Hamill right. joking about Kylo Ren. Yeah. Everything. We do have some uh, updates on Star Wars Celebration stuff. Let's do that. In the that list of guests, good. and that's interesting. Oh, maybe yeah. for yeah. most of uh, your desires, sir, in Chicago. Yes. Um, what do you mean? You, mine. You're going too. Well, but but I'm talking specifically mm. to mm. you as the commissioner of the movie trivia show. Oh, well, excuse yeah. me. Oh, I, I am see. the yeah. commissioner of the oh, movie trivia yeah. show. I forget. I forget. <laughs> Christian is the chairman. That's chairman. Right. I'm back in the talk, He was talking to you. He just, he was, <laughs> <laughs> I am interested as well. Uh, uh, Jonas uh, Suatamo is like uh, going to be there, Chewbacca. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But Sam Whitworth. Sam Whitworth. 
going to be round and out there. Greg, Greg Grunberg, uh, mm. the wedge of our time, and a lot of other cool things. But yeah, uh, I, I love to Greg Proops, who of course voiced yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. uh, Foats and Bead in The Phantom Menace and is uh, currently a couple voices, including Garma, uh, a, a female character on Star Wars Resistance mm -hmm. um, and the old uh, the Improv Veteran. Mm -hmm. uh, so a lot of cool guests uh, as this five day event is starting to shape up. Yeah, man. All right, let's just start with our with our buddy Sam Whitworth, which you will see, by the way, mm -hmm. in the uh, when we're going to show this video, we got a chance to do Shadows of the Empire. Is that what? Secrets of the Secrets Empire. Secrets of the Empire. Mm -hmm. Shadows of the video game. Yeah. Uh, Secrets of the Empire, the VR experience, the void, which was a lot of fun. And Sam was with us, but yeah. we, uh, we'll show you that video in just a second. But Sam going does not surprise me at all because True. I don't know if they're going to be promoting the VR stuff because he's he's a part of yes, that. Yes, he is. And if they're doing more stuff, he'll be involved in that too. Anything on the video game stuff, he's involved in it. But well, was I was going to say, I mean, you know, Clone Wars is coming back. That's where I was going. So, yeah. so that's, that's, the, that's the main yeah. thing. The main thing is, is he's going to be there for Clone Wars. Um, sure. Clone Wars, he will. he's voicing Darth Maul again, I'm sure. Yeah. If, if Darth Maul pops up, why not? He does a dead-on Emperor, but if they were going to get the Emperor, they'd probably now just get Ian McDermott. Same thing we were just talking about before. Um, but Sam Witwer needs to be in The Mandalorian. I mean, oh, he needs yeah. to be in The Mandalorian. I mean, first of all, if you're watching what he's doing on Supergirl, um, he is one of those guys. And I know a lot of times, not just Lucasfilm, but a lot of different companies, they'll look at a, a voice actor and they go, ah, a voice actor, not actor for live action. I mean, Clancy Brown is somebody who says, don't, don't worry about that. You know, I'm, yeah. I'm Clancy Brown. I can do both. Yeah. Sam Whitworth is another one of those guys. He's intense. He is a good looking dude. He knows Star Wars better than most of the people at Lucasfilm. I and that's not even that an exaggeration. Sam Whitworth is actually the sole author of all of Wikipedia. Yeah, I'm, I'm <laughs> serious, frankly. man. Like, he, he, he is on, when he's on set and you, you would rely on him to do stuff, you know, because I'm yeah. sure like on, on Solo, they probably relied on him for the scene that he was in. Like mm -hmm. he, he's just, he's like an encyclopedia when it comes to Star Wars stuff. So he, uh, he I think that he, they would really be doing themselves a disservice if some role, one way or another, and you don't have to make him star killer, give him something completely different, you know, yeah. and let him be part of that show. And he's pretty close with Filoni, so who the hell knows? Yeah, I would really yeah. like to see him on uh, The Mandalorian, for yeah. sure, along with Katie Sackhoff. Yeah, Katie Sackhoff as well. I mean, she, why Another not? Another one that I feel like can do both. She can do both, <laughs> and she, and it, but what would be great is if you actually made her Bo-Katan. Oh, right? Yeah. Because right. It, it fits. It totally fits. It, it fits. That's who she, she voiced, and how great would that be to, to put Ugh. them all together? It'd yeah. be amazing, because at that time, she's supposed to be running the uh, the Mandalorians. Yeah. Oh, no, I guess it, yeah, because oh, yeah, yeah, she's, yeah, she's, she's taking yeah. the dark I was going to say, yeah, is, yeah. as far as we know, throughout the entire original trilogy during that whole rebellion era at that point Bo-Katan would have been you know. the Mandalore essentially spelled differently Arr. than the planet but yeah yeah man I'd love to see that too uh, but yeah. absolutely but there's a lot going on at Celebration, and then Jonas makes sense. He's, he's he has taken the Chewbacca, Chewbacca mantle now. Yes, he has taken the mantle, yes. and good on him. He came in here on Jedi Council. Couldn't be a nicer human being. He's awesome. Congrats to all the success there. Uh, Grunberg showing up makes sense. You, you talk about somebody <laughs> who must have fist bumped about a thousand times when he heard JJ was coming back to do nine yeah, because he, he was, was cut like, out oh, at eight. Yeah, yeah he, he was, I'm he, back, baby. Yeah, he was not asked to come back in eight, and, yeah. and now he's back in nine. And I'm glad he's back. He's it's just something about him. He's got that kind of. I like, I like Snap a lot. Then yeah. we, the, we can't uh, forget the poster that was re uh, released poster. for the event, mm -hmm. the 20th anniversary of Phantom Menace coming up. So I like seeing Padme right in the center there. Yeah. Uh, Start reading that book yet? Uh, I don't have it. Copy oh, I gotta man. give it yeah, to you. I don't have a copy I'm rereading the Empire Strikes Back novelization. Oh, which yeah? Which has been a fun adventure. That's not canon. Yeah, it, there's a yeah, there's a lot of things that you kind of go, <laughs> but it's weird. It's yeah. those novels, man. Yeah, yeah, I'm kidding. You know, Veers dies. Yeah. Veers dies. Oh, jeez. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what's, uh, what else? As far as what's going to happen, who's going to be there, will there be any surprises? Mm -hmm. I mean, Mark Hamill's supposed to be there. He's got to be there, right? I, would I mean, how do you have a Star Wars one? celebration yeah, without Mark yeah, Hamill? Do do I mean, yeah, I mean, they've already announced them in nine, so I mean, it's like, it's yeah. Like, yeah. why wouldn't he think, be there? I think you bring out the big cast. The big things, there. we'll talk about this a million times over by the time we get to celebration and the preview, but things we know we're getting. And we'll talk about it a little bit more in the canon yeah. section. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. But we know that we're getting the, la the, the next episode nine, whatever mm -hmm. the hell the title is. We know they're going to get that trailer. Clone Wars, I bet you they screen an episode. 
I would not be surprised if they screened a full episode. That's what they did at Rebels. They yeah. showed like two episodes, but because I think there's, I forget how many episodes there are going to be. I think 10, yeah, um, something 10 or like 12, that. I think. Either way, uh, they'll show one or two and definitely a trailer and the panel will be bonkers. I guarantee mm -hmm. it. Mandalorian, we're going to see footage from Mandalorian. We'll talk about that in just a little bit. Um, and I th really think that's the three big things that we're going to hit. Yep. I have backed off on the idea of the Benioff and Weiss stuff being announced. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's going to happen. I think there's too much focus on Game mm -hmm. of Thrones mm -hmm. right now for them. It starts that Sunday. It starts that Sunday. So I don't think they will be there. I don't think that will happen. Um, I don't think we're getting any announcement about that for a little bit. And they don't need to because they have all these TV shows. And Cassie and Andor might get some stuff. That's a get a little, oh, little yeah. bit filled out. Yeah, yeah, that'd be good. Yeah, I mean, it's a lot, lot going on, man. A lot Books going and on. comics and just the art stuff. A lot of artists going out there. It's going to be five days. Is that's that's some. Yeah, <laughs> that's an intense. It's like that when you spend that four day trip in Vegas and you, you needed to leave on the second because all your money's gone. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, I wonder what. I mean, you got to assume that Thursday, Thursday and Friday will probably be. Well, it's that Thursday, Friday, Saturday will be the intense days. Those will be the yeah. Intense yeah. Intense yeah. Day, you know, get get your feet wet. It's not on Wednesday. It's, it's Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Oh, oh, really? Monday, yeah. Monday. It's not That's Wednesday. so strange. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Interesting. Yeah. Because normally, because it's like with well, San Diego Comic-Con. How am I going to recap Con? Game of Thrones? Yeah. Uh, you got to do it from Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's just going to be set up in a hotel room. You. You're not going? You're yeah, done? I'm not going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you do it from the hotel room. No, I know. I, I found that out. I thought yeah. I, originally. I thought it was Wednesday. I, did I really too. did. Okay. Originally, I did too. I thought it was. Oh, interesting. Because I reached out to our mutual friend over. I'm not good with dates. Yeah. And both real dates and going out to eat dates. Thursday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Saturday, Sunday is what I thought it would be. Yeah. And then yeah. I was informed that that is indeed not the case and it's wow. Monday. That's why I don't think, like, what's going to happen on Monday? <laughs> like, I can't imagine that much. Imagine that much because we. going to give out, uh, like, flu shots <laughs> yeah. for the yeah. con flu. You <laughs> That's really the last it. Four days. Exactly. I'm telling you, I, can't, I don't know what they're going to do on Monday, and especially because work and, and school yeah. and things yeah. for people, too. So I don't know what it is. I have no idea what's so. going to happen on Monday, and I bet you there's no big announcements or anything at all on Monday. It's probably. You know how Sunday for San Diego Comic Con is usually like the day where people just walk around the floor. Yeah, I think that's, probably, that's yeah. probably what they're going to do is to, is let all the exhibitors say this Monday's our day to really sell whatever we want to sell. Do a couple of maybe it's maybe it's going to be a big podcasting day. Mm. We're this is what we're aiming for. As we have, it's not been confirmed yet. The mm. panels have been approved, but they're not confirmed yet. This is what we're aiming for as far as. Uh, what we, we're going to do. Thursday will be a Star Wars movie trivia schmodown inside of the convention. Um, Friday, we're looking to do the Rule of Two panel with Mark Fernandez and Mark Riley. Saturday night, outside of the convention, we're looking to do a Star Wars movie trivia schmodown, um, possibly for the championship. If I can get Sam Witwer, that's what I'm looking for, him versus Damon. We'll see. And finally, on Sunday, the Jedi Council panel will be on Sunday. So that's what we're aiming for. I am going to have more details details soon so if you're going there please come by and say hello uh all right is that everything in the that, we're gonna run News. into canon that is it. <laughs> all right. time to uh cue up our little fun little thing let's a do little tease of what we did oh we're doing that all right let's do that yeah. we just mentioned sam Witwer. we had a really fun time at the vr experience the void we had, i had mentioned to you guys once i did the wreck it ralph one that i was just uh, over the moon with this stuff and then we were invited to experience the star wars one and man it was it was something else and we got a little video for you here you go Guys, we are here, Secrets of the Empire. It is a VR experience, ILMX Lab. They created it, The Void. We are excited here to finally do this. Once before, I've done The Void, but it's Star Wars. And look at this crew. We've got Sam Witwer, Darth Maul himself, Jeff Dye the Maniac is here, and the rest of Collider Jedi Council, Rule of Two. Let's just get going. Come on, let's do it. Should we remember all this? These are like uh, <laughs> virtual reality spanks. <laughs>
so happy right now. This is the greatest thing I've ever done. That was the greatest oh thing gosh. I've ever done. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah, it was great. Yeah, it was great. I don't want to. I don't want to spoil the ending to anybody yet, but a lot of fun. Well, the strangest thing was, and I got to give credit to Sam. He wasn't talking that much because you could hear him. And then, like, well, which Sam's talking? To? I was talking enough. You were. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah, that was great. You know, yeah. after, after a while, you down. feel as though you forget, and you feel as though you're really in it. You're ducking to avoid Oh it. yeah, absolutely. And I kept getting blasted and I was like, I was like, who's not covering me? And I, and I couldn't figure out that thing. I, I, I yeah. mean, yeah. you could barely thing. use your iPhone, I wasn't surprised. I wasn't surprised, it's true. Uh, a lot of fun, it lived up yes. to all the expectations. I, you know, I felt like I was like really there. Yeah, yeah really I, in there. I mean, that is the thing that's really so awesome about it is that as a Star Wars fan, we all dream of like being able to be in Star Wars and you would play Star Wars when you were a kid and you would have to pretend that you were seeing everything all around you happening. And with this, you were actually in Star Wars and it's so awesome. Never before have you had the opportunity to walk into Star Wars like this. I mean, you've, you know, we've played video games and RPGs and all that stuff, but this is quite a different thing. Everyone that I've taken through here is like shocked. And I never tell them what it's gonna be before they go in. They're always like, what is it? I'm like, I'm not gonna tell you. Um, and they always come out of it just absolutely amped and psyched and really having enjoyed a very, very unique experience. I'm, I'm really happy to be involved with it because anything that's experimental and new is always fun to try to figure out how to do it. Well, I had the best so time fun. ever. I'm sweating. Oh, it was, it was it hot. like you're actually there. I don't yeah, want to give anything intense. away, but it's a Star Wars themed interactive virtual reality experience. adventure. <laughs> what what a treat. A lot of familiar characters. You're going to love it. No Jar Jar. I was just a Star Wars. <laughs> All right, we're done, and as you can see from these guys, they still—they wish they were back there. Thank you to Sam Whitwer. Uh, thank you to Alan Tudyk, by the way, who is character in this as well, K2SO. Um, Diego Luna, man. Diego Luna. I don't want to give you anything else, though, yeah. because you guys need to experience this on your own. This is something really, really fun. As Star Wars fans, get to it. Do it. This is a very different type of experience. I'm glad we did it. Once again, thanks to Sam Whitwer. Thank you to everybody here for, ex for letting us experience this. Go and do it. Stop watching this. Go. Go. Once again, Secrets of the Empire, The Void. Man, that was so much fun. I cannot even explain. It's The Void is, I mean, we do, you, if you watch the videos that we've done here with Josh McCougan and the VR, we've done a lot of VR here, and it's a lot of fun. But this is like on a whole other level. Yeah. And it was funny, during the break, Emma had said to me, she's like, it must have been weird being there with Sam Whitwer. Yeah. Because yeah. Sam's like a really big character inside. We're not going to give any spoilers of the story itself, but like Sam is a big character inside of this thing. So it was myself, Ken, Sam, uh, and we were, and right. Riley. We were going through the, this. You can walk inside of it. And you're walking through mm -hmm. and you're looking at all this stuff. And Sam's character starts talking. You can hear each other like like you can like stormtroopers when it they're does. Talking. Yeah, it, it is exactly what you would imagine. It sounds like inside of a stormtrooper helmet. It's hallway. great. <laughs> and so Ken would say something. I'm like, okay, turn the corner, turn the corner. And Riley, I'm over here. And then you hear Sam's character, and he'd be like, all right, everyone, move. And I go, what, Sam? What? what? And he's just saying, but real Sam's just kind of standing there. <laughs> and then the, the 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 other Sam is talking. I'm like this is this is bizarre. But the other thing with Sam is that Sam's just kind of like an intimidating uh -huh. person, but he he's but the sweetest guy in the world. But yeah. he's just got, if you don't know him, and but he's also one of those guys where. He, He's got a, a blaster, and you're like, yeah, I'm just going to follow him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's just walking through, and I'm like, I'm going to follow that guy. But it was a lot of fun, man. You could, it's, it's, you're, at one point, I think, you can say this, you're in Mustafar. Yes. And you can feel the heat. And you can yeah. smell the ash it's from awesome. the volcanoes, too. Oh, it's so amazing. If you got a chance to do it, wherever you are, 
I promise you, as Star Wars fans, you, yeah. you'll love it. It's an amazing, amazing experience. And thank you guys for uh, for having us there to do it. You, Ken, you loved it, right? Yeah, I had a lot of fun. It was one of those things. It was like, hey, come over to this thing, and you know, life's busy. And you're like, yeah, 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 okay, I'll get over there and have some fun. And then I drove home, going, I want, I want to go again. I, I know, because you feel like you're on the playground, which is kind of the core of Star Wars, yeah. right? Takes yeah. us back to our youth, and you're like shooting star stormtroopers and ducking around things, and yeah. you're trying to figure out a code, and we're like, was, get through the door, get through the door. It's, I was terrible at that code. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And it's and it's great. It's the virtual reality is so good. You know, you look down your hands, you see everything. Yeah. Then you have to at one point you have to walk past a, on a, on a very narrow railless path. I was it's watching you. I was watching you. And, and, I, and I thought I was yeah. going to fall to my yeah. death. And yeah, there so. there are definitely some times where you have to be on like a narrow gangplank kind of situation and like go through doors and yeah. And, but it really truly like what you are perceiving is that you are really truly in this thing. You feel and, it because you, well because it's the thing you can look around and yeah, everywhere and you everywhere look. Where you look. It's like you're you're there. This is the scary thing. This is this is today in 2019. Imagine what this is going to be like in 10 years from now. I know. Like you're going to have full on movies experiences inside of this thing once they perfect mm -hmm. perfect it. It's going to be like the holodeck in Star Trek. <laughs> um, it, it really yeah. is going to be because if you if you're able to do that for I mean if I could shut myself out and do that for two hours, I know. I mean, it's, you just like it, because two it's, weeks. It's so so immersive. <laughs> it really genuinely is very. It's like therapeutic. Almost. It is, man. <laughs> to yeah, just go shoot a bunch of stormtroopers. But you're also you're just you are literally. Yeah. It, the reason we watch movies is to escape, right? There is no definition better than what we did on this thing yeah. of escape. I mean, you are you are someone else. Mm -hmm. You are inside of this adventure, inside of this story, which is very well written. There's some. It, it was great. Yeah. A lot of fun. The Wreck It Ralph one is good. This one's good. The Jeff Die, my buddy, yes. who was who you saw there as well. He uh, he loved it so much. They had never done him and his buddy Tony came with us, and they had never done VR before. And I saw, I hung out with Jeff yesterday, and he he goes, dude, we went back we went to we went to santa monica and we did them all again we did we did three of them they did there was a horror one which i can't yeah. remember the name yeah, of it nicodemus, nicodemus is the horror one did you yeah. do it i haven't done it okay. yet i, I actually terrifying. the people at the void were telling me they're like well if you don't make the right choices in nicodemus you will die like you die the end you yeah. can't get the good ending unless you like do your research there's a there's like a short story that yeah, goes along with that's it that's what i heard i heard yeah. it's pretty creepy yeah. um, research get to do your research in the game yeah, yeah. we gotta we gotta take makuga to do that one. Uh, oh yeah, you yes we, we oh Makuga my god oh, please my god. i want to be there for we, we, we doing really, that one we really should if you guys have never watched makuga do vr just do, do yourselves a favor <laughs> go and watch josh makuga vr exorcist the first one's the best one but Look at them all. <laughs> watch Josh McCuga VR Exorcist, and I promise you, you'll get a good laugh. We watched it yesterday, and I've seen it a million times. <laughs> like I've watched it a million times over. Um, okay, let's uh, let's move on. Let's go Cannon. to Canon. It's that time of the show where we talk about everything, not just the movies. It's the deal. What's the deal with Canon? Everything that connects to the Star Wars galaxy uh, through comic books, video games, television shows, whatever it might be. Uh, not really video games yet. Maybe one time. You know, like one day. 20 years we'll get a video <laughs> game. Uh, but that's that's it. Ken, what do we got? Hey, you know, let's start off with a story that people you know, are asking. Like Joe Campanelli on Twitter. He, he reached out using the Collider Jedi Council hashtag. Any updates on the Mandalorian? Well, here is one possible update, Joe and fans. This is from the Variety editor, Todd Spangler. He tweeted out on January 18th. Disney said it will demo Disney Plus at its Investors Day on April 11th, including the first look at some of the original content for the uh, SVOD service. So this leads a lot of people to think, uh, you know, there's going to be a lot of things on that service, but this would be a realistic time to show some Mandalorian stuff. It would be. I always kept, I kept saying the second day, but you're right, the first day of Star Wars Celebration, if they can tie it up with some big panel there, that would make some sense. I'd be shocked that they don't show anything in celebration, and, yeah. and I would almost call it a take it to the bank guarantee. Yeah, yeah, especially with this announcement, the fact oh, they're going to show it. Definitely, and, and I mean, at the very least, a trailer. But I think there will probably be more. I think both. Than that. Yeah. I think both. I yeah. think you get a, you'll get a trailer for it, and I think you will absolutely get footage or scene. I think that yeah. the people there will get exclusive scenes. Sure, things that that the uh, the audience will not see. Like uh, there are Game of Thrones panels that have happened at San Diego where we've seen full on scenes mm -hmm. that people mm -hmm. still to this day have not seen. They didn't release it. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I I'm sure you maybe they didn't do it on the uh, on the DVD. I'll talk to you about it afterwards. I don't want to spoil anything. Mm -hmm. But um, they uh, they will show the trailer to get people hyped up because that's the promotion side yeah, of it. Of course, I think it would be a 
tremendous missed opportunity if they don't because this is the biggest Star Wars audience oh, yeah. that they're going to have. Yeah, yeah I, right, I right. guarantee you there will be a trailer. Yeah, you have to, or, or at least <laughs> footage for sure. Now, Cassie and Andor, we're not going to get footage. Yeah, no, no, yeah. You know, we might get Diego Luna come out, yeah, talk more information, about it, yeah. yeah, and just kind of figure out who, maybe, maybe a couple cast members mm -hmm. from it because they're going to start right. shooting next year. So that would be, or I, th I guess they start shooting this year. Yeah, so, right. yeah, that will that's that wouldn't be surprised if we get no footage there. But as far as Mandalorian, I'd say it's I'd say it's a lock. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. If you this is April and we're hoping to launch that in fall and, yeah. and get it going, yeah, that that's just just right. And then it would line up where I think Friday would be the big episode nine day, but mm -hmm. going on past uh, celebration experiences, right? Yeah, nine yes. and then um, yeah. Saturday, Saturday, more animation, usually? Yeah, I mean, it, it could switch up, too, because look, yeah. you got to remember that Lucasfilm's plans uh, are, are, are changing, yeah. because mm -hmm. there was a plan for a while to do a movie every year. Right, right. That was also, there was never a plan in some, when they announced this whole thing to do live streaming show. That just kind of evolved once they realized, we can they just do this do on yeah. our own. Yeah. And then it is kind of, it'll fill a void, and I'm okay with it. I, I used to, like, I wanted movies, shoot, I wanted two movies a year. And I yeah. still think, and I know a lot of people because of, well, you saw that didn't work because of Solo. There's so much different stuff that happened. There's just a, a marketing plan I think could have been right. di very different to get to movies a year. But I don't want that anymore. I don't mm -hmm. think you need it anymore. i much rather have the television shows. I think the shows can, can define characters and define storylines. Yeah. So Well, and right like now, this. too, I, I think just talking about sort of the, the structure of Celebration and overall what the big focus is going to be each day, live action television shows is a completely new factor. Yep. And as you say, we don't know what the live action television shows are going to look like just yet. Right. I have nothing but high expectations. Uh, and I'm with you that it it's really, especially nowadays with the amount of production and money and thought that goes into producing television series, it's like, yeah, I would love to get a Star Wars story that like has the room to breathe that, that a television series has. Absolutely. Is Kevin Kiner doing the music? Do we know that yet? Did they, uh, no, he's not. he's not. I can't. No. They did they announce, announce who's doing the music. Right, right, right. They, they, they did announce who's doing the music oh, for Mandalorian, uh, and it's, it's not uh, Kevin uh, Kiner. It's um, Black Panther. We, oh, right. Oh, we yes. talked about this. Yes. Right, yes. Right, 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 right. We talked about Bars, it. Yeah. Good, yeah. And uh, good choice. I think. No, very good choice. I just. Kevin Kiner. I know. Give him give him Cassie and then. Come on. Yeah. I mean, don't just put it. Same thing. Well, he does the animation. The guy is a tremendous composer. And I think that, uh, to be honest with you, should take over once John Williams decides he doesn't want to do it anymore. Yeah. So I, I, I think that one of the things that they were trying to do, and I understand it with, with the standoff films, whether it's Rogue One or uh, or Solo, they kept having new composers come in. Let's them, let them try. Let mm -hmm. them try. Have and we're not even gonna do saga films. Have a new, have one composer do it all mm -hmm. and let it be Kevin Kiner because Kevin Kiner knows how to do Star Wars. He takes a lot of his original music and he infuses it with the the greats of John Williams. I think he's done it the best out of anyone. So will yeah. not get any argument from me. Yeah, so. <laughs> that. I, I'm a huge huge fan. He's I'm great. Here. <laughs> He's so good. Okay, so that's everything uh, in Canon? Or we yeah, I mean, Gary Widow was on Kind of Funny Games Daily, our friends oh, nice. up there, oh. talking about the EA thing. It just basically said what a lot of people were thinking, that EA completely mismanaged this other Star Wars mm. game they're working on. He says, I saw a bunch of that game, and it looked terrific. It was canceled. I saw some of the stuff. Um, and it would, yeah, Star Wars Uncharted, and uh, apparently EA, EA saying they didn't want to make Star Wars Uncharted. Then why hire the narrative director of the Uncharted games to make it for you? And all good points. Uh, you know, again, I, I'm not a gaming expert. I just sit down and and play what's in front of me, but I really understand a lot of people's frustration with the big picture what's yeah. going on, so that kind of continues to roll on. It's tough, man. EA is not having a good go with the Star Wars stuff. No. no. It's just not having a good go and the, with fans not loving it. I mean, our buddy Jeremy Johns had, had posted um, a, a Instagram post a couple of weeks ago, and he said, this is the amount of games we got when LucasArts was right, right. doing, I mean, it was like a ton of them. And yeah. Like, Here's what we've gotten in the six years each, right? right. Tons of games in that six years with Lucas Arts, and then two games in six years. Yeah, right. Right. it's interesting because you would think that much like toy companies compete for the license for something, that video game companies would be like making Lucasfilm offers right. to take over because EA has struggled 
so much. And obviously, Star Wars is a huge money maker. Right. So I what the contract is. I don't yeah. know. There's got to be some very restrictive contract there because yeah, I want to know what Lucasfilm like. What they're like. What the what are the meetings like? Like are they, are they saying like right, what's right. going on, guys? Yeah. Or are they saying that's nah, okay? You know, like, we'll we'll figure it out. We figure it out because maybe their focus is not the games, which is crazy. Sure. Because you right. think about that the gaming industry makes more money than the movie industry. Mm-hmm. Right? <laughs> it's like yeah. if you can get a really popular great Star Wars game going, like. I always use it just because it's my favorite game yeah. of all time, the Knights of the, the Old Republic. Republic. <laughs> it's like if you can figure a way to capture that magic again, which is not easy, I understand that. Yeah. It's like you can capture just the right. essence of what Star Wars is inside of the game and very similar to what we were just talking about with the VR experience yeah. is that you, you're just transported. I've never had an experience like Knights of the Republic in a video game. Like I literally at the time I took a day off I, tell you, I took a week off from work <laughs> used all my sick days yeah. to, to play that game and, and finish no, it. It's true because I mean the, the thing that again that Knights of the Old Republic got right is that it really you felt like you were part of of Star Wars, that you were making these decisions and you were shaping it because so many things happened in the game differently based on the choices that you made. And that's very much, as you say, what happens with the VR stuff is that it's like you are actively in it. You have to make choices. There are some things you can do slightly differently within the VR experience, but I'm not going to spoil anything for you. Um, But yeah. So yeah. I don't know. I just it's it's. I think you give them, you give them a couple more chances or maybe one more chance. I think the fans well, right now probably fall in orders. Them right? It's, oh yeah, everything yeah, Star yeah. everything Star Wars is them. So yeah. it's just like let's yeah. Uh, yeah let's see what you can do because yep. there's, 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 the we well, you know the fans are a little testy. A little, little bit. A little, little bit. bit. All right, let's move on now. Now we're going to hear from you guys. You, Like I said in the beginning of the show, you've hashtag Collider Jedi Council on the Twits. You've gone to the Facebook group, and you have left your comments there on the Collider Jedi Council group. First of all, and before we even do that, I'd like to thank our buddies over at Star Wars Newsnet, who take a lot of these stories from uh, across the uh, from across the webs, and they put them all together. They have original content as well, so go check out our pals over at Star Wars Newsnet. Uh, com. Ken, what do you got? Let's start with this question from the Facebook group. Richard Okatora mm-hmm. uh, says, or Okatoro, sorry, what do you think the chances are of Episode Nine revealing to us the existence of another Jedi who was trained by Luke Skywalker but survived the massacre at the temple and went into hiding? If that's the case, do you think that person will assist Rey in defeating Kylo and the Knights of Ren? I love the mm. idea. I love the idea. I like, yeah. There's a couple of different ideas that I'd love, but I just don't think they're going to explore it. There's a few things that kind of factor into that. We know, and they say it, I believe, in Last Jedi, that Kylo d- didn't kill everybody. He said to people, hey, either you come with me mm-hmm. or then I'm going to kill you. And a lot of people came with him. So yeah. Where are those people? We also know inside of the, uh, the Visual Dictionary that we know Snoke's not a Sith, but we know inside of that he didn't have just one apprentice. He had a couple of apprentices. Yeah. Will they show up now? As far as the, uh, were, did anybody escape from that temple? If, the, if so, what did Luke tell them to do? Did Luke tell them to go into hiding? Did Luke? It's very possible. Mm-hmm. I'm just going off of track record of what has happened in the last two movies. Mm-hmm. There, a lot of things that have been opened that they just go, "Dah, we're not going to talk about it." And I feel that's going to happen again. And I hope I'm wrong. Um, but it, it it would be great to explore that. And I hope that they do because it would make sense that there's someone else out there, but I don't think they're going to touch. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you that I don't think that they're going to explore it. I think it's something that certainly may be explored in canon novels that yeah. are centered around this time period. I certainly would love to see some characters that say did go with Kylo originally and then were like, whoa, bro, this is too crazy for me, yeah. and then, like, defected <laughs> from him. Like, I think that would be really interesting of, like, these are people yeah. who got away from him and who he probably was trying to hunt down at some point. Right. But again, I, I don't think that that's going to be within the film itself. And if it is, it it's going to be a whole bunch of them, and they're basically going to be background characters that have a couple of lines that, like, come join the fight if there's, like, a big, you know, like Battle of Pelennor Fields at the end. Yeah, well, there was a thing. There was this big rumor that it turned out to be uh, just complete BS. I loved the BS story, but there was a rumor that before Last Shot I came out that there was Kylo Ren and a bunch of the, whether it's Knights of Ren mm-hmm. or these fallen Jedi that battle Luke and Rey and they have this intense lightsaber fight and Luke is doing all this the Jedi powers yeah. and fighting all of them with the sabers and I was just like oh where's that scene but they it was just it brought up the idea of 
Kylo Ren has more Force users, mm -hmm. I think it would be great. I just don't think they're going to go down that road, but fingers crossed that they do. Ken? No, yeah, it's all realistic, Richard. I mean, it's it's certainly a possibility. I mean, it, it, you, it wouldn't, if that happened, hi, I'm I'm Bob, and I, I got a lightsaber ray. I mean, yeah, you'd be like, oh, okay. That's okay, cool. <laughs> I like it. It would be something that, not just in canon novel, but you go 10 years from now, you're not, you know, I don't know if you're going to get Daisy to come back yet. We don't know. Sure. We're talking to her in 10 years. It'll be a long career. And hey, she's got a school. This guy comes back. You know, yeah. uh, I have student loans from Luke. I'm here to fight you. And it becomes right. that battle. That, that's the stuff you could do. Um, but I agree with you, too. I like, uh, you know, I, 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 I don't necessarily expect all these dots to be connected because yeah. these these little tiny things. What's Kylo's story? Does it does it need that? I don't know. I don't know. But you say something, though, inside of that, that I, I hope that they do. I hope that they hire, they have somebody there in the development side of things, right? That does exactly what you just said. And that's, we don't know if we're ever going to do this, but start jogging that down some ideas right, right, right. about other characters, not necessarily just Jedi, that can live in this universe after the events of episode nine mm -hmm. and yeah. things that happen and things that play. And that's your job. Your job mm -hmm. is to, every year, you just keep working on a story. Yeah. And then... You know, keep that person on for as long as you can and have like a little pocket of people. I think you said five, ten years from now. Where's that story at now? Well, we've been working on this for ten years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we've got a three series, or three seasons worth or a, yeah. th a trilogy yeah. of everything that happened. And you keep de detailing it. That's what made episode four so special, right? It was that everything was de was so detailed and layered, like it had been there forever, and that the, the ships were dirty, and that they had been shot out. And mm -hmm. There was so much detail that George Lucas had put into it. Imagine all the detail that could happen if someone was working on it right now, mm -hmm. leading all the way up. For, and, but let it sit. Like what Kill Bill, you know how right. uh, Tarantino wanted yeah, to do a Kill Bill, Bill 3? Yes. Yes. So working on it forever? Yeah. Like that type of thing. Yeah, well, and yeah. I, and I I think that, that that kind of factors into one of the to what I was kind of thinking is that I think again that there is a possibility that we may see those characters but we're not going to but as you say like as a setup to explore their stories right. somewhere down the line but not within the context of episode 9 itself. Yeah, I want to see some setup. Yeah. Like even be, it's just some setup to where it's like how cool it would be if they were actually setting things up and they, because it's, it's Lucasfilm, they could make, and Disney could make it happen because they've got the, so there's cer certain times there's like independent people try to do it or smaller films try sure. to set things up and like, ah, we never got to it. It's something we would like to do. It doesn't have the success. Imagine if you're watching episode nine in, you know, 10 years from now and you go back and you're like, they were setting this up 10 years ago. Like mm -hmm. that type of thing. I would love to see them try to maneuver and do that. We'll, I doubt it, but yeah. we'll see. No, it's what, what I like about that is it doesn't matter if you're legends or it doesn't matter if you're new canon. George wrapped everything up, right? Yeah. yeah. Yub nub, we're celebrating. Evil's been top, <laughs> top right. pieces. Right. Been, and then to pick up that story whether it was Timothy Zahn or not you 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 it's fun and you can do these things but it's yeah. almost like you have to rebuild everything and then what happens is you start go well around the corner was this mm -hmm. other guy right. yeah. and you didn't know about right. it and I, and I can get on board for that sure. but to be able to do that without having to do that exactly like, well, oh, and, here's actually and I think corner. that that is some of because like you were saying Christian of you know of, of episode four being so detailed and layered and there was so much more you wanted to know about this right. universe which ultimately got explored in, this, in the sequels and prequels and sequel sequels but that the idea, and I think that that's where some of the frustration comes with where when you're getting films like Solo and you're like, but I I feel like I know what I want to know about Han Solo. I want to know more about, you know, third level rebel from the left in the background. Right. And it, it, again, it's, it's that idea of like setting it up and having so much more like just other people's stories well, that's to I tell. Episode four to me, because that's the one that George really wrote, I think it was his best work because mm -hmm. if you look at what he did there, he put he put little things in there that we can explore. What's that? What's that? But it didn't hurt the story that he didn't tie it up inside of episode four. Mm -hmm. Example, and the majority of it comes from that meeting with Obi Wan and Luke mm -hmm. when he's sitting down and he says to him, he tells him about the Clone Wars. Like you, 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 you fought with my father in the Clone Wars. Like it's yeah. like. And what are the Clone exactly, Wars? You yeah. ask what the Clone Wars are, and that eventually leads to a great series inside of the Clone Wars that you can explore much later on. Yeah. Um, the same thing. He was a great pilot, uh, great pilot, and, mm -hmm. and a good friend. Same thing yeah. you can explore later on. There's all these things that you can just throw in there. They're like, oh, really? And granted, that takes place in the past. Maybe you want to set up some prequel stuff, mm -hmm. um, like in a series or anything. But I, you can still 
talk about you can set things up to layer into the future and i wonder if they can they can do that but uh anyway we went yeah. went down a rabbit hole <laughs> no. what's, uh, rabbit holes are fun. Good rabbit hole. what's, what's next <laughs> uh we got this question for it's it's directed towards emma five oh uh, <laughs> it is uh from nashi to nashi nashi i don't know if i'm saying okay. that right. <laughs> At Max Z Goof. Now that I like. Max Z Goof. Uh, we have live action Star oh, Wars movie like slash movie. So shows, animated shows, books, comics, and games. So when will we get a Star Wars anime? <laughs> or will Star Wars ever be big enough in Japan for that to happen? And would you watch it, Emma Fight? Of course I would watch it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, here's the thing is um, I think that I my sort of predisposition towards anime and my lifelong love affair with it has made me have a slightly different perspective on animation than I think a lot of people do. And I think with anime a lot, there is a tendency of going, oh, this is produced by Japan and it's animated. This might not be for children. Right. Um, and, and I think that that would be a good opportunity. I mean, you, I mean, honestly, you could have like a Benny Hoffman Weiss like level of like, you know, sex, blood, gore, violence, all of that mm -hmm. in something that was like an anime, but Star Wars. My only thing is, of course I would watch it. However, Star Wars has very much set itself up that all of its animated series are appropriate uh, for mm -hmm. children. Right. Uh, don't treat children like they're morons by any stretch of the imagination, mm -hmm. but a 12 year old can watch Clone Wars. There's nothing in there that's like not able for them to right. watch right. so i mean I, I i my only thought is that they could do something like uh if they did a like jedi tri this is what i would want to say that would be totally uh, appropriate is like a it's like a my hero academia kind of situation but it's like training jedi because my hero academia is basically superhero school okay. so if you had like a series that was kind of like jedi school with like right. young kids from all over and you could have okay. all different alien races i like this idea i can tell you're yeah. excited yeah. I'm into it. <laughs> i like it i like it yeah. well there you go yeah. there, you see great question to ask the anime <laughs> expert all right let's get uh let's get yeah. this last one let's get out uh last one there okay and i'll tell you second note, just i love the galaxy of adventure things in Star Wars kit. Oh, I yes, would, they're so I good. I would love if uh, Titmouse was able to do a full series, like an animated series, yeah. like four seasons in that style. I've been really loving in that there. Um, all right. All right. Let's, uh, let's, you want to, you want to, let's do a fun one. Let's do a fun one. Okay. Uh, Aaron Hitton at uh, Aaron Kenobi. Uh, he is related to Obi-Wan. Do you guys think a Star Wars movie or TV episode could work if they only had an alien cast and no English was spoken, only subtitles? Uh, and the reason I bring this up, Christian, is, is we hear a lot about yeah, we want some more alien characters, and there's definitely more in the books and comics. Mm -hmm. Obviously, a different medium. Yeah, um, we don't want to do. You know, it's tough to do the Gene Roddenberry Star Trek. It must look like a face type of old rule. Do you think this could work on any level? Uh, yes and no. Um, I think that an all alien movie could absolutely work. But if you listen mm -hmm. to Claire live uh, and you heard just Josh McCuga's take on Roma. Uh, it's like it's it's tough to get any a lot of people to watch uh, subtitles and to have uh, so and to ha I know <laughs> and to have uh, I, didn't, I didn't see that moment but uh, I can only imagine no and to have uh, all aliens talking subtitles is going to be tough I think that you can do an all alien movie and one or two of them can speak basic and I want to make sure that uh, that my point from last week or the other week is is clear I think that you can have some aliens talking basic I think that when Hondo does it, it works in Rebels. Yes. Um, I think that when Cad Bane does it, it works. Okay, There are certain characters that work. There are other characters that come off very silly when they're talking basic. I think that when you set up uh, Jabba the Hutt in Return of the Jedi, mm -hmm. and he's talking, and you have the subtitles, very intimidating, works great. When you have Zero the Hutt, <laughs> with, with a new New Orleans accent, it looks ridiculous. When you have the Mama, whatever her name is from Mama Hud, yeah. No, 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 from uh, from Solo. Oh, Lady, Lady Proxima. Lady, Lady, yeah, Lady yep, Proxima. Yep, 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 yep. Yeah. That work. character yep. ceased nah. being intimidating immediately the second she starts talking basic. Yep. I, yeah. I agree that, that character would have had a crazy alien voice with subtitle. Yeah. That's a way different scene. Totally. I'd like to see someone. Totally There's so agree. many crazy editors out there. There's so many great editors right there. Please, if you have the time, cut that scene with an alien voice and subtitles yeah. and yeah. send it to me because I will I will tweet the hell out of it. I, I, yeah, I, that I, would I, be I, dope. I do agree with that. Yep, yeah. that's a little bit. I, I think uh, I, I I totally am 
following your point, Christian, with this. I think that more likely what could happen is within the context of, say, uh, a television series, you might have an entirely alien-centric episode. It's it's a lot. Mm -hmm. You're asking a lot less of an audience to watch something that is primarily subtitled in the comfort of their own home, uh, and it's just one episode, and then right. you know it's going to get back It's a little more to, niche that way, it's too. A little, yeah. It's a little more niche that way. I, I think that that is more likely than having an entire film where it's all just... but. You know, who knows? I think you're right. And you know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of like, were you Breaking Bad guy? No, no. You no. were though, right? Uh, yeah, I like It's Bad. like the Fly episode, yes. right? It's yeah. like, so the Fly episode was very niche and at first. Uh, directed Ryan by Johnson. Ryan Johnson. <laughs> um, and, and at first I didn't like the episode a lot, but then when you go back and you watch it, it's it's a very, it's it's a great episode. Mm -hmm. And I would like to see something along those lines. Yeah. And I think, That's exactly the, I think what your I'm point thinking. is right. Yeah. Yeah. Ken, what do you think? Uh, I... Totally. This is why I love this question, Aaron, because, you know, Star Wars and it, Jabba is the perfect example of yeah. how that worked, how Bib Fortuna can go back and forth. I understand they need to speak basic, but yeah, in, in prequels, it's it's problematic. Yeah. Some of the choices mm -hmm. uh, that were made. Um, but uh, like I joke, but I seriously, the rise of Chief Chirpa story I joke about, like there's something to me that's interesting about how this guy came to power in Bright Tree Village. You could do something, but... How's that? How long is it gonna last? Right. Ten minutes of yeah, that's a that's a good anime series. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah exactly. Right. Yeah. Um, so I think uh, live action TV does give you a chance to maybe do an alien co lead and have some fun with that. And I, I think people will. I like. I want to. I want to see a, a a new Twilight hero yeah. as well. Not not yes. even even more Hera. But it's funny though too because that's the thing is that it's it's tricky and it's it's not yeah. as easy as it sounds when you decide who which aliens speak basic and it works and which ones are cheesy because Hera. Right. right. I don't want her speaking uh, al an alien language. I yeah. like I like her the, the basic that she speaks. I would like. To sometimes maybe see her go into some twilight oh, sure. language you know and i think that there's there's a lot of different characters i mean yoda right but the opposite side of that is can you imagine if they would have had chewbacca speaking basic movie doesn't work no it's ridiculous no. if he starts talking uh, basic. oh yeah, yeah. if he's point. talking to han like like a normal dude that like, this is ridiculous and, and i would not i understand why because it's again bringing up the rebels thing but it's like like uh, i have zeb has like uh, yeah. uh, Zeb, I always say Zeb. Yeah, it was Zeb. Uh, Zeb. Uh, Zeb. Zeb. I always don't know why I always say yeah. Zeb. Um, you know, I, Steve Bloom's great. Mm -hmm. I love it. But like, I remember, like, he's got a like got Cockney accent. Right. Like, yeah. like, <laughs> it took me, right. Yeah, it yeah. took me a while to get used to that, and it's fine, and it's a great character and a great performance. But but he wasn't cheesy though. That's the thing. No, it wasn't, it wasn't cheesy. cheesy. And again, a great performer yeah. behind it. But like, I meant like, oh, wouldn't he be kind of the Chewbacca? Yeah, but I, under, I understand but, yeah. why. But you can't do that for an animated. There was an adjustment. Show. Yeah. 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 If there's a if the character becomes goofy, speaking basic. Yeah. It just doesn't work. Because that's the thing is that yeah, and and but it yeah, it's interesting because then you look at something again like Chewbacca, where like he mm. would be goofy speaking basic, but he's not goofy, just roaring like a Wookiee. Right. 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 Like imagine Bib Fortuna, same thing. Like yeah. If he if, instead of doing the language, like hey master, this guy just showed up and it's like, oh my god then it becomes a yes. then it becomes a kids kids show yeah, yeah. that's our talk <laughs> thank you for joining us on collider jedi council once again i'd like to thank our panel first Fife Diaz. Yes. Where can I find you? Uh, I am all over the internet wherever Emma Fife's are sold at my name, Emma Fife. Be sure to check out the Movie Trivia Showdown Awards that are going to be dropping tomorrow. Uh, also, if you guys want to watch the live stream in New York, you can do that. Uh, you can buy an e-ticket to it. If you're not going to be there in person, the show is sold out. Um, yeah, but, uh, and then I'm also back uh, over at Hyper RPG continuing our Call of Cthulhu campaign. Uh, the show is called He Left It Dead. It is GM'd by our dear friend Joe star uh it was real fun last night y'all so that's on wednesdays but yeah ken knapsack where can i find you oh you can follow me at ken knapsack across all social media platforms and i will be in new york this weekend looks like all shows are sold out including the comedy show yes. that josh and i are hosting for mark ellis that christian's going to be heckling us in the front row <laughs> at so uh hopefully hopefully see y'all out there It'll be a lot of fun and inside schmodown is back right yes, we got that i mean i know back. it's back but <laughs> the 29th i believe yeah, the date right? first episode is back we are going to it's gonna it's gonna progress we'll do we'll, for the first one it'll be back then probably like two weeks later it'll be in 
another one, and then we'll then they're going to keep coming out weekly. But yeah. give us time. Um, now, as far like Emma said, that's the great the great deal of having the commission with us. She <laughs> does all this for you. But we are very excited to be in New York. I can't wait to go to New York. We're going to be there. It's going to be a sold out show. But as Emma mentioned before, go on over to triviasd.com. You can also get the the ticket there. We're going to be live streaming so many uh, events. One of the things we want to do is live stream the Star Wars Schmodown. Mm-hmm. So in order to do that, we need this one to be a success. So go check it out. Check out the live stream. You'll be able to watch Merle versus Erwin for the championship. Do that and uh, and let us know what you thought. Did it work? It's a guinea pig, this one. We're going to see how we've never done it before. So we'd love to have you over there. Please check it out. Subscribe to this podcast feed, the YouTube channel, obviously, all this stuff. Thank you. Please leave some comments and we will see you next week. May the force be with you always. Hey everybody, Mark Ellis here. Thanks for watching this episode of Collider Movie Talk. You want to watch more? Then click up here or you can click right here for more great content from Collider. And if you haven't subscribed to Collider Video, do so right now and share this vid with your friends. Thanks for watching.